Welcome to the Vigorous q and I'm Coach Steve, here to answer all your bodybuilding related questions. Did you guys see that nice sparkly fresh new disclaimer? It's because we're now finally monetized. So that means I can't swear anymore uh, because the YouTube algorithm of course picks up all the swear words. So I'm going to expect that something is going to go happen in the editing process when I say Luoxi Mesterone or Furosemide, Formistane, Stanazolol. Stenbolone, testosterone, primabolone. See? See the magic of editing? So, all the swear words are now going to be edited out so I don't get, you know, banned on YouTube just like I do on uh, Instagram. So, I'm still going to talk openly, yeah, give you guys the information you guys want to know about. Um, I'm not going to hold back, um, even though I might formulate a little bit differently, um, you know, because uh, certain things shouldn't be generally advised over the internet. So, you're going to have to make your own decisions based on what I'm going to do with my body and how I would approach, you know, certain situations by myself. Um, with that out of the way, a little update about myself. I'm still on TRT, still training at home. Nothing new has changed. I'm still around 102, 103 kilos. So that's what, 225, 225 pounds, you know, around that weight, which is pretty uh, decent, you know, given uh, the fact that I'm still on calorie restriction, trying to get a little bit leaner, a little bit leaner, a little bit leaner. Maybe lose another two or three kilos of body fat, and then I'm going to slowly increase my calories and uh, get right back to bulking, which is going to be a clean bulk, a lean bulk, yeah, gain muscle, not fat. And then hopefully by the time the gym's open, which for now is going to be somewhere around uh, middle of June, I think 14 June is um, the, the expected opening date, but hey, you can get ex extended again. Um, so um, that's basically the plan. I'm going to stay on a cruise uh, as long as the gyms are closed because uh, I don't want to waste uh, a cycle on the, my home gym. And, uh, you know, I only have a barbell and a couple dumbbells available. And I do, I, I might buy some sort of Smith machine and cable station combination, um, which I might be able to do leg press, you know, in Smith machine with like five, six plates and per side and do a little bit of donkey calf raises, that kind of stuff to get my uh, lower back, uh, lower body growing again. Because, uh, you know, just doing squats and sumo squats with the barbell is, is not really, uh, you know, sufficient to really go to town on a decent quad exercise uh, training a day. So, that's the update for me. All right, so with that out of the way, let's just get into the questions of this vigorous Q&A at the end of the month. First question of today is from Alexander Bridgman. Is growth hormone and insulin a game changer in terms of results? Sure is. Does it mean I can lower the dose of anabolics and get better results? Um, I suffer from very bad uh, skin and acne. But I have access to a genotropin and consider running two units per day for 72 days with Novorapid insulin. Would I see a big improvement in this uh, time frame? So I think it's pretty safe to say. So what I noticed for myself is that when I first added growth hormone in, I could probably lower the, the dose of anabolic steroids by half. So let's say I was on a thousand milligrams of combined gear, you know, a little bit of test, a little bit of aldenone, a little bit of masterone, whatever I was running at the time. By adding two units of growth hormone, I would get similar results by dropping the steroids dose in half, simply because the synergy of growth hormone provides so much more uh, hyperplasia. You know, you still get hyperplasia from steroids, but it's definitely not as much as the combination of steroids with growth hormone. And when I added insulin in later, I could reduce the anabolics a little bit further. Now, I didn't lose, reduce the anabolics that much further because I was significantly larger at the time. Of course, when you're larger, even when you eat a significant amount of food, you're probably better, you know, off with a little bit more anabolics for your weight. So. You know, I always, in the cruise, for example, I stick to the one milligram per one pound of body weight rule. So, you know, if you're around 225, 250 pounds, 250 milligrams of testosterone appears to be very beneficial to maintain your size. Now, when you add two units of growth hormone on top of that and, and insulin, which is enough to cover your meals or, or part of the carbohydrates that you eat in each meal, you definitely get better results. And, and the good thing is growth hormone and insulin, if you keep it moderate, and you don't overdo it, there's, there's, there's no 
none of the health ramifications or, or lipid level changes or blood pressure increases or, or you know, kidney, liver, uh, cholesterol, all those markers, they don't go off or they don't change from the use of growth hormone and insulin. Again, with moderation, yeah? don't take this uh, as uh, an excuse to say, oh, Steve said it doesn't change anything, so I'm going to go eight units of growth and 50 units of insulin. You know, <laughs> your blood sugar levels are going to change definitely when you do that. Yeah, I'm talking about moderate dosages. So the synergy between all three is always going to be better, for, more beneficial than running one separately. So whether that's an anabolic separately, a growth hormone separately, or an insulin sem separately, running all three at the same time at moderate dosages will probably give you better results than running either or or a combination of two at higher dosages. Yeah? So what he was asking is he wants to run two units of growth hormone with uh, fast-acting insulin, over rapid insulin. Will you see big improvement? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> for sure. Because the anabolics allow for recovery, the growth hormone allow for hyperplasia, and insulin is going to provide the nutrients for optimal hyperplasia because you got to remember cell division is a very labor-intensive process you know, you're literally taking one cell and trying to combine two out of them which requires new cell membrane new uh, protein structures which are inside the cell and new dna um, and, and a myriad of other things electrolytes uh, fluid of course so definitely when you drink in or when you use insulin not drink insulin when you use insulin and growth hormone, you need to stay hydrated because the hyperplasia and the delivery of nutrients is all shuttled through water. Yeah, so make sure you stay hydrated. That's one of the most important aspects. So that's why I got one and a half liters of water here, which is going to be finished way before I finish answering all the questions of the vigorous Q&A this, uh, this uh, recording session. So you got to stay hydrated at all times. So right now, for example, I'm running 250 tests. DHA and pregnant alone, which I've talked about many times before. Two units of growth hormone, yeah, and I just started 10 units of Lantus, um, which is a long-acting insulin. So that's one unit per 10 kilos of body weight, which appears to be, you know, more than enough. So that's just the basal insulin to cover whatever carbohydrates, whatever gluconeogenesis occurs in my body um, throughout the day without dropping my blood sugar in significant low amounts. So that is enough to to produce this yeah, in a calorie deficit so i'm eating man, 2800 yeah 2000 and you should see all the volume yeah which looks like steroid volume but it's you know 250 tests a week it's not that much that's from the growth hormone and the insulin yeah you hold a little bit of water in return so my face might be a little bit more bloated and and you know my abs are pretty much glazed over at the end of the day but that's a trade-off. So, you know, <laughs> right now, nobody's going to go out uh, frequently and, and nobody's allowed to go to the beach. So now would be a good time to experiment and see how much water retention you get from two units of growth and, and a few units of insulin. And again, everybody has to decide how much of the insulin they're going to use because it highly depends how many carbs they eat. They're, they're, um, the glycemic index and the glycemic loads of the carbohydrate source. The amount of carbs, uh, the combining of carbs, protein, fats, fiber, anything else that can change gastric emptying, yeah? The type of insulin they use, yeah? If they experience any uh, gastrointestinal upset from other meta stuff that they're using. So all these things go into, you know, a wide group of variation um, or changes how your body responds to insulin and which dose you need to use and how your blood sugar changes. I just wrote a 20 page article about the use of insulin in the Facebook group details how to join below it's, <laughs> it's getting everything out of the way before I got to the insulin part 17 pages yeah? 17 pages on how to correctly use insulin yeah? so all these things you need to keep into consideration before even touching insulin and when you do touch it yeah you will see a significant amount uh, of changes compared, you know, to similar levels of anabolics you were using before. And you might be able to reduce your anabolics by half, which should improve your blood work um, as a result, because in the end, it's the steroids that usually has the most negative effect on your blood work and the growth hormone and insulin, uh, again, considering you're keeping that in moderate dosages, are not going to ruin your blood work by that much, you know? And, and okay, we have hereditary response to insulin, yeah? 
if you if you have pre-diabetic symptoms before starting insulin uh, some people already have high levels of high levels of cholesterol and and ldl which you know the use of insulin might increase so again everybody responds to this differently so i can't give a black and white statement on what's going to happen because you still need to do blood work and assess your level of health before applying insulin but in my opinion it's highly beneficial um, and I use it with most of my clients. First step is going on, a, you know, let's say you take a natural athlete. First step is learning how to use anabolics after you've maxed out on your natural potential. Yeah, so that my, let's say a client comes to me, 75 kilos, you want to do the first cycle. I say, okay, let's go up to 85 kilos first, 10 kilos of body weight. Yeah. In the meantime, you build up the calories. We're about 85 kilos maxed out under calories. They can't really grain, uh, grow that much more at, at a, a fast pace. You know, so they're stuck at like one kilo per year, which is, you know, for most people, not enough. Go to replacement dose of testosterone, 250, 200, 250 milligrams per week. Yeah. You get a little bit of experience with that. Add in the growth hormone, one or two units per, uh, per day, depending on their finance and, uh, you know, state of... Um, of body fat levels you, know, you don't want to start with two units right away if they're a little bit higher body fat levels because you're gonna hold a decent amount of water start with one unit maybe four weeks later you go to two units if they can afford it and the water retention isn't too bad again it highly depends on which brand you're using if it's generics or pharma grade and then four weeks later you add in the insulin yeah because by that time so we're talking probably a you know a trial period of, of at least eight months maybe a year by the time they're full-time bodybuilders and i know exactly what they're eating what they can digest how hard they're training how to respond to the to the anabolics and how to respond to the, to the gh i have no problem recommending a little bit of insulin use whether it's a long-acting insulin or short-acting insulin it highly depends on the client and and uh what they would prefer because everybody has a preference you know i said oh some people don't want to be on basal insulin the whole day other people prefer to be on a short acting and other people you know prefer one shot per day and just get it over with um yeah and those guys they grow fast man they grow really really fast um you know so <laughs> I hope that answers the question. Um, I think it's highly beneficial, and and the, you know the blood work of the clients that I do recommend insulin to is usually uh, it's usually pretty good. <laughs> yeah, usually pretty good. So hope that helps. Hope that answers your question. If anybody else has a question and want to ask me uh, that uh, daily, you can do so in the private Facebook group. Details below. Coaching consultations. That's also available. To send me business in your email or private message and i'll um, get back to you because i get a lot of private messages nowadays and uh, you know if i uh, see business in the header then i know you mean business and we can get right to work yeah see you guys in the next video